So hey everybody, just gonna put uh, the GeForce 9800 GTX Plus into the Core 2 Duo machine you see here, but then I noticed a problem in that I only have one 8-pin connector for this power supply, and that card takes two 6-pins. Uh, so until I can get some sort of adapter for that, I'm kind of stuck there, but we can use this R770, and that will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, get all the stuff hooked up and we'll get started with that. Okay, so as you can see, I definitely moved the computer up to a different location, not only for better accessibility, but just because it's more convenient to have it here in the first place. Um, with the R770, which this is an R770, not a... Well, no, nah, never mind. Same thing, whatever. Um, I replaced the thermal compound on it because the... Um, well, I just wanted to, and the uh, factory thermal compound was applied like water, essentially. Um, I just dumped it on there and let it let it be squished. So I went ahead and replaced that with some, uh, what do you call it, some icy diamond, whatever it is. But anyway, let's get to replacing the graphics cards. Well, there's only one graphics card, so I don't know why I'm saying that plural. Now, you may be wondering... Why with this system, which I think I've showed before, why I don't uh, replace the CPU right away? Well, I don't know if this this uh, power supply can take having a new graphics card and new CPU at the same time. So I'm just going to go with the graphics card for now, see how it performs, and then we'll go from there. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I didn't mean to cut. Well, I actually, I did mean to cut. I just meant that I was going to do everything live. The reason I cut is because I needed to put the top back on this. Because if I didn't, I knew I would have accidentally elbowed it or something and spilt it everywhere, and I needed to go to the bathroom. So, now that we are good to go, let's just go ahead and get this blower fan screw out. Go ahead and just move that out of the way. Alright. Go ahead and put this over here. And just remove the graphics card. Maybe wondering why this has no thing? Well... Go watch the video that I'm going to put here. So, now let's get this baby installed. As with any raw graphics card, you shove her in like so. Make sure she's seated. And perfect. Boom. Uh, now... Let me just make sure that I'm not going to surprise myself finding a connector. Okay, I shouldn't. This should be perfectly powered off of the PCI Express rail. Hoping that's the case. Let me get it screwed down now. I only use one screw because I'm a scrub. Come on. I think the back of this case is bent slightly. Either that or this card is. But yeah. I got that screw right there. No. No. Oh, you little sugar. Come on. There we go. Caught. Lovely. It's not going anywhere. Alright, now we'll put the blower back in. I'll put it more over here, though. Oh, that's going to require two hands, probably. Let's see, can I do it? Nope. Alright, um, I'm going to need to put the camera down for a second. Keep it going, though, since can. There we go. Perfect. All right, so there we go. Got our stuff back installed. Uh, one more thing I have to do is fix this fan, screw it in, and we'll be good to go after that. So I'm going to get everything, well, I'm going to get that fan situated, and then I'm going to get everything plugged in, and we should be good to go. See you guys when I get that done. Okay, so we've got everything set up. 
Um, I have this plugged into the watt meter so we can make sure that it stays below 550 watts at all times. Because um, if it does, then the power supply is going to blow up. And I blew out the power supply a little bit because it's kind of dusty. And I need to get in there and clean it manually because it's smoker's dust, so yeah. And I have the fan situated and have everything should be good. So, let's go ahead and flick the power switch. That's fine. Got 1.2 watts on the meter there, so now I'm going to go ahead and press the power button. First power on, it'll shut off after a couple seconds. I don't know why it's an Intel board, but it should be fine otherwise, unless it blows up. Got about 90 watts on the watt meter there. And there we go, shut off. I'll go ahead and power it on. Graphics card seems to be working. Got about 80, 82 watts on the watt meter. And we have video. Uh, mouse not found. Um, you're crazy. Uh, well, I'll wait until we get into Windows here. Okay, so I got this to work as the drivers installed, did some testing, and then I realized that Windows XP was too restrictive for my needs in this case. So I'm going to install Windows 7, and hopefully that'll get some stuff to work. I'm not even going to bother with the updates in this case, because there's really no point. Um, probably this will turn into a Linux workstation where I can render videos, and when I get some uh, more plugs for this power supply here, I will, uh, you know, put in one of the bigger graphics cards. In addition to putting the Core 2 Quad Q9300 in there, which is... I'm going to go in pretty much as soon as I get Windows 7 installed, so, yeah. Be back in a little while. I thought I had 4 gigs of RAM installed in this thing, and I only have 2. It's not enough. Um, I'm shutting this thing down right now. It's taking forever, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade the RAM to 4 gigs. Finally. And I'm going to put in the Q9300. I don't know if you can see. I think you can, but down in that bottom left corner there... There's a bunch of scum down there. I'm going to clean it off, so let me get a Q-tip and my alcohol out. I'll do that real quick. This is taking forever to shut down. It has been more than two minutes. This is what happens when you run out of memory. Oh, it's doing Windows updates. Okay, alright. That's Yeah, thank you for telling me about that fucking windows. Okay, so after 13 years, it's finally shut down. So we can begin the process of replacing the CPU. First thing we're going to do is flip that power switch. Go ahead and discharge it. Come on, LED. Go out. There you go. Alright, now go ahead and remove the cooler. This is a pretty reasonably good cooler. Definitely not the best cooler in existence for a 775, but it works pretty well. Certainly better than an Intel stock cooler. And if anybody complains that I'm not screwing this on or unscrewing this correctly, uh, I don't care. I'm unscrewing it, not screwing it back in. I will do the correct cross tightening when I put the system back together. Hopefully I didn't kill the CPU by uh, wiping it with that Q-tip just a few seconds ago. If I did, I'm going to be kind of angry, um, <laughs> more than a little bit actually. Um, so let's see, is that off? Nope. That one's out. I think that one is as well. Oh god. By the way, this graphics card stays remarkably cool even when the fan's not on. Test that in Windows XP. Alright, this should come out now. Oh, come on, dude. 
My arm is getting tired. All right, let me get this off. We'll be back in a minute. I think this thermal compound is icy diamond, so this is going to be a pain in the butt to get off, but uh, it shouldn't matter, so let's get to work. I'm really not going to do this on camera. It's too hard, so I'll just be back when I have uh, the CPU in place and this cooler cleaned off. You might notice on this cotton bowl that like around the edges here, it's kind of like golden. And that's not from the heat sink. That's from prior thermal compound that was like gold. I don't think it worked very well. Um, but yeah, that's just, just a factoid. Ta-da! Got the new CPU in. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply thermal compound, put the uh, heat sink back on, and we'll just make sure this works without having to do a BIOS update. I should have really checked that first, but hey, I don't care. Okay, so I have the new CPU in and the uh, CPU fan plugged in, so let's go ahead and power it up. Alright, go ahead and press the power button. We get that usual dealio. I think she works. Yeah, we got a post. Should video here in a second. Flawless victory. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off, and I'm going to go get four one gig sticks of RAM, and we'll go ahead and replace that. Okay, so for my RAM, I just got four arbitrary sticks of low de or high density uh, one gig DDR2 RAM. Low density, meaning it has chips on only one side of the stick. High density, meaning it has chips on one side of the stick, uh, because historically Intel prefers high density RAM over low density RAM, and a lot of the times if you use low density RAM, it'll actually beep at you. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get all this RAM out. I think some of this might actually be high density RAM, but I really don't care. Low density, low density. Low density, low density. All right, none of it's high density. So, okay, so I got all the new RAM in. Hopefully this will post, let's go ahead and test. Okay, I don't know why it just shut off then. What the hell is it doing? Okay, that's not good. It just tried to turn on again. That's bizarre. Um, I'm not really sure why it's doing that. All of a sudden, let me go ahead and only do one RAM stick. That's bizarre. Okay, let's try this. Should shut off. Okay, that's legit. All right, now let's try it again. Oh wow, it's still doing it. What the hell is going on here? Wow, it just tried to turn on again. Okay, so. Wow, all right. Let's try this. Okay, so this should throw a postcode. That's expected. Good. Alright, let me try putting in... Just make sure that doesn't turn back on. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Alright, lovely. Alright, now I'm going to put this one in. And see if it does that. Hard to do with one hand. There we go. And that's in. So let's try it. There we go. Okay, so shut off as normal. Didn't turn back on. Promising sign.
Oh, that's weird. Okay, well, it works. Let me just find some better RAM. Apparently this stick is broke as hell. Okay, so she's good now. Um, I guess this specific Hynix stick, for whatever reason, doesn't really work right. I'll have to test it in another computer before I can, can say anything conclusively, but yeah. There we go. Got four gigs of RAM installed and working now, as well as a four-core CPU instead of a two-core CPU. Flawless. Let's get into Windows. So here we are in Windows, got speed fan installed and working all nice. And oh my god, the CPU's at 121 Celsius! No. That's what you would call an inaccurate thermal reading. So let's go ahead and get rid of CPU and AUX because those are completely wrong and now we have the correct temperatures. And as an added bonus, you can see that cores 1 and 2 are 10 degrees hotter than cores 3 and 4. 2 and 3. Well. Okay, it's it's core zero and one that's hotter than two and three, but you know how that works. For our first test, we will run Cinnamon Bench. It's actually called Cinnabench, uh, and we're just gonna run that on the CPU, see what kind of score we get. Hopefully, it'll beat out the Pentium D, just by a little bit. So it wound up being literally two points behind an i5. That's great! Probably once we get this GPU driver installed, we can run it again and probably get an even higher score. So I'm going to go ahead and get the GPU driver installed and try it again.